go through this meth kit a little more in detail now. See what we got to work with before I install it. Got plenty of long zip ties. Got the main meth line. This will get ran through the car. Fittings, self tapping screws. My nozzles. LED for when it's on. Everything's pre-taped, you know, so you don't gotta worry about doing that. Got the filter element, pre-taped, pre-assembled. The relay that's gonna power everything. Another LED, more wires. The drain or something, I don't know what this is. We'll figure it out. Explains how to set everything up, different ways to set everything up. Pretty in detail, pretty self-explanatory, pretty dummy proof. Packing list, instructions how to actually install everything. Got our pump, our tank. We got the billet lid on the tank. Cost a little extra for this lid. The tank bracket. We just have to make a bracket to go from the car to this to hold the tank in place. We got our actual controller. We got our settings right here. There's some more settings in this box. The math wires. We'll figure out how we're going to run this on the car. Trunk kind of dirty, so excuse the trunk thing. The tanks can go right here, so we're gonna get it bolted down in here. I'm gonna go up tomorrow, and Nigel's gonna make some brackets for it. Pull the bottom of the seat out, you just grab under here, like right here, and just yank up, it locks in. The seat belts, they're gonna go through the seat. It's foam, so it's not really heavy. Same thing with this plastic trim stuff. Well, these ones got a little star bit in there. Get that out. It's gonna be a T20 torque to take this plastic trim out. So T20 torque. Take this right out. Set 
set that right there so we don't lose it. I like to find where the clips are and then pull up on the clip. So you got these three clips. That way you don't just grab it here, pull up, and sometimes these will break like around here. We're gonna run the wires and lines right down through here, through the trunk. You have to loosen the back seat up. I think they're 13s. Thirteen millimeter seat bolts. The seat's actually three pieces. Each one's its own piece. Once you get the bolts out, just pull the bottom up, push up, and it comes right off. Take the sides off first, then take the middle piece out because they're over it. And then once you get the sides out, you have two more bolts back in here. I also just realized you only need to take this side off because that's where you're running the wires for the meth kit and stuff. You can run them under here. Actually, I don't even think I need to take the seat out, but whatever. You guys got to see the seat come out. Push the button, and it's loose. Yep. So, like I said, you don't need to take that part of the seat out, but I did it anyway because I'll once I'm in the zone, in the mood, I'm doing it. So you pull the sides out. You take the bottom bolts off. Once you pull the sides out, you can pull the center piece off to take the back seat out right here. Still 13 millimeter. I'm gonna run the lines for the meth and the wiring right here on the passenger side with the main power wire for the battery. Now we're in the driver's door. Pull this trim piece out. Like I said earlier, I like to find where it kind of like where the hooks are and pull it from there. See, don't want to break these. The older your cars, the more fragile these are and they'll break. My Corvette, this actually broke in half when I pulled it out one time, so I had to buy a new one. For this one, I just pulled the weather seal up a little bit. It clips into here, so I unclipped it from here, and then just popped it up from the bottom, and it came right out. Pull the weather seal up on both sides. Don't mess your weather seal up. You're gonna need, you know, to keep it in shape. Just enough so it gets it out of the way. You also pull this one out. Mine comes out pretty easy. It's been out a few times to run wires and gauges and stuff. And now we're good to go to run the wires and lines from the front of the car to the back of the car. Whenever I'm running any type of lines, I make sure I tape the ends up. That way they're not getting trashed in them as you're running them through the car. You can see the battery power line. We're just going to run the wires with that. 
through the hole and through the front of the car. Remember in doing wiring, get your handy dandy wire feeder coat hanger. That took all of about 30 seconds. Should be plenty of hose. I don't know where I'm gonna put the pump yet. But I'll probably put the pump down here. That way I can keep this in here since, like I've said, Small Life's Daily Driver. We take the same road trips everywhere we go. It's been everywhere from North Carolina, Tennessee to the Grand Canyon, Arizona, anywhere in between. I started the wire from the back seat since it has to go both ways. I figured it'd be easier to run it through the back and the front than trying to run it all the way up from one end to another. Just use my pick, slide it in there, pop it off, pop it off, pop it off, pop it off. Open this up, so we're gonna run our meth line through there too. The wires go, the meth goes. Shove it up to the front of the car. I always try to follow the wires and stuff that's already there. I can do this with one hand. That's where we're going to run the lines. Got the line nice and tucked in there. I just kind of pushed them down. They slid under where the wires are. They'll fit nice and good. Same thing, weather seal goes back. It's weird to do with one hand. I'm gonna pull the hose up to the engine bay. Yes, I know, I still have to run wires. I'm just gonna undo this again when I run the wires. It's the struggles I go through. I ran it through the grommet where the hood latch goes. It's down under this thing. It's easy to see once you like pull the carpet back some. Just follow this wire. Have plenty of mess or plenty of line. So this wire will go to the pump, up to the controller, inside the car where it gets mounted. The red wire goes from that to the controller to power it. So we'll get this ran. Also, if you're anything like me, this wire, the brown wire with the little hose, or not the hose, but the wiring connector that doesn't go to the pack module. Um, if you read your instructions first, that might help. I didn't, but it goes to the tank. I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes trying to figure out where this actually wires to you. Look in the instructions and oh, crazy. It tells you it goes to the tank. Sorry about the machine guns. You know, I'm in the army, so that kind of happens where I live. But remember, America runs on Duncan. Um, 
These are not paid ads, by the way. So got the pump back here. Kind of just got everything set up where it's gonna go. You go ish. Tomorrow we'll have to go get, Nigel's gonna help me make a bracket for this to bolt it to the car. Got all the wires ran back here, all the lines. Got the line with the filter that attaches to the pump, then the other line. All right, so for the grounds for the pump, this white wire with the eyelid on it. Pull this plastic thing off, same thing, a couple tabs. You got the screw things in here. They fell down here. These things, unscrew them. And I'm gonna ground it to here, along with this wire. So, no better place to put grounds in the factory ground. I'm gonna extend this wire. It's just a little short for how I ran it. I mean, it might work, I just don't want it to be tight. So I'm gonna cut it and solder in some more wire. Give it a good extension. Update. So this wire didn't need to be extended. It was just tangled up back there. So once I extended it, I went to pull it through and I found, you know, a couple more feet of brown wire tangled up. Got all the wiring ran, all the lines ran. Just gotta run these two into the car. And that's it for today. The big camera died, so this is all cell phone footage now. We got our handy dandy wire polar. Got our MAF signal wire, our main power wire, going through the firewall, same spot as our meth line, which is, like I said earlier, it's the grommet where this comes through. I just kind of got them all in there. It's where my wide bands ran to. It's actually a pretty good spot. So we'll pull that through and clean up this mess. And that happens sometimes. Use more tape this time. Let's try it again. Worked that time. I just had to use two hands. I got a math extension harness that's on the car for the LSA swap or LSA. So I'm just gonna tap into the math wire for the all key control into the extension harness. So I'm not actually tapping into the factory harness. Getting the wiring done for the meth kit now. It's gonna go the same place as the DSX fuel pump went. I'm just gonna put the relays up front because I already have my air cooler pump relay and my aux pump relay back there, so those relays would be up here. It has a tap to use to get into the fuses. It's pretty neat, never used a tap like that before. And the ground's gonna ground up here. Red is power like always. Guess down the road I'll make a actual like, fuse block and run all these on their own fuse blocks like a nitrous system. Like I had my Corvette's nitrous. I had one power wire to fuse block and then everything got power from there. Makes sense. I don't like jumping everything off a of fuse. The ground right here is a 10 millimeter. The bolt back here for power is a 13. This is a factory ground from the car, so you'll see the ground spot. So on the IAT breakout harness, this for the LSA, we're gonna tap into the MAP signal wire, which is the yellow wire, with the yellow wire from the all key control kit, because that's gonna be our MAP signal, obviously, to the MAP conversion. I'm just 
just gonna deep pin it real quick. Get the needle nose pliers, stick it in there. Just give it a good pull, pops out. We want the yellow wire, it's the end. So the yellow wire, we already pulled the purple out, we just need to get this thing off. I need to get a pick real quick, or a small screwdriver works. Gonna use our small little flathead. Pry it up a little bit. See it in there. Pry up the lock. As you pry up, you can just turn the screwdriver down, pushes it back into the locking pin, and that's how you deep pin a connector. For wire strippers, I highly recommend these. All different gauges. Got the wires cut, you sure you slide your heat shrink on. Never want to wire something and then realize you forgot to put heat shrink on after it's all soldered together. We're going to connect it back together just like this. We're going to have a new wire run in there with the old wire. These are also nice and handy. Hold the wires while you're soldering them. Like I said, you need the heat shrink, so when you're doing two wires, I almost did the thing I was talking about. I almost had heat shrink on one wire, but not both wires, so that would have been fun. I wanted to go wire it in. Got the wire tied in, about to solder it up, and it's good to go on this side. I deep pinned it just that way. I'm not trying to fight with all the wires at one time. A tip for soldering is heat it up from the bottom, feed the solder in from the top. You don't want to just get the solder on the outside. You want it all the way through and melt in the wires. Gets the better connectivity. Make sure your soldering iron is nice and hot. I always preheat these, let them sit for a little bit. Put it under it. Let it start to get the wire hot. I'll tap the solder. Clean your soldering gun, makes life easier. And she's together. It's cool. You're not gonna burn yourself. Slide the heat shrink back down. You never want to do this while it's still hot, because your heat shrink's gonna melt before you even slide it over, it's, it's still hot. Don't burn your heat shrink, you just heat it just enough to melt it. You don't wanna melt the wires and melt everything together. 
I will repin the connector. If you look in here, let me zoom in a little bit. See how the rest of the pins are? Put the pin back in the same way. Feed it through the back, obviously. When it clicks in, it's in place. Pull it, make sure it's locked in. Put this back in. Sorry for the background noise. My dryer is also in my garage and we're doing laundry. And she's wired in now. Got the MAF signal wire in to the IAT breakout harness to the MAF. Go ahead and connect it back to the car. Once the meth kit's completely installed, I'm going to go back and clean up the wiring. But I just don't want to tuck away. I'm going to zip tie it all out of the way right now. Once everything's installed and I know the meth kit's working, then I'll go ahead and wire loom all the wires, make sure I don't have to go back into any wiring for anything. I meant the meth kit wires. These wires we have wire loom for. We're going to loom them back up. There's no point in having all the math wires hanging out. I like to run my finger down to open the loom up. Use my other finger to push the wires in. And until you pull them back out like that. Mucho cleaner. Put the loom locks back on there. They click in place. If you don't have any of these, electric tape, zip ties, all works the same. Make sure none of the wires are close to the headers. Make sure meth line's not close to the header. Meth and hot exhaust do not go together. So I like to use the factory right here where the harness is from the factory. I like to just pull this off. I tuck the extension harnesses under here, like the map sensor extension, the map sensor wire for the fuel pump, math wires. Use what's already there to hold the stuff. I think the line's in the way. See that thing? Move my catch gun line out the way so you can see what I'm talking about. Right here. The harness has a look thing on it. Just slides onto this bolt. Push the wires up there, keeps them away from the headers. For my car we got a single nozzle meth kit. I don't know if you can see the numbers. We've got an M10 nozzle. Yep, there you go. M10. We also have an M5 nozzle, just because like I mentioned in every video. 
my wife's daily driver. Spare nozzle, M5. The nozzles go on the intake. If you've never done a meth kit, after your math, before your throttle body, so like right about here, but it's gonna be under the intake. We we'll do the M5 nozzle. It's for like road trips and stuff. That way, I don't have to worry about my wife running out of meth. If she runs out of it, whatever, it'll be fine. If she has meth, it'll still benefit from it, but it's not gonna be a huge thing. I'm not doing everything in one day, so I just tucked all the wires back in here, just zip tied them together. They ran through here going forward, and I ran down here just temporarily next to it under the weather seal, just until I finish up the install stuck them back there they're not connected or anything but, well the map wire is but I'm gonna tape that end off got my meth line zip tied gonna drive up to Nigel shop tomorrow once he makes the bracket for the tank then I'll finish installing it I don't know if I'm installed at a shop or not I'm not planning on it but I have everything to finish the install at the shop also Nigel's a bad influence we'll just be hanging out and he'll tell me to throw the car in the dyno I don't have a dyno so I'm never gonna say no to that so I got my Dino Ice Scooper 4000 ready to go. Remember, pre-orders are available. Got extra spark plugs, smaller pulley, belt, tools, rest of the parts I need. Sorry, the mail truck just drove by late, late tonight. Got all the tools I need to finish the install plus swap pulleys and do whatever I do on the dyno. So in the morning I'll throw my five gallons of meth in the car. Well, the five gallon jug in the back seat. I'm not pouring the meth anywhere yet. The car's all back together. Ready to go. Drive up to Brutal Speed and Tuning tomorrow. Pump's gonna, or er, tank, that's what it's called. English is hard. The tank's gonna go right up here. Get the bracket done and she's good.